Hi guys. Okay, welcome. So today we are going to uh, proceed with our uh, advanced calculus session. So what we're going to do today is we are going to learn about uh, how to differentiate and integrate uh, parametric functions that uh, we have uh, already been dealing with uh, currently. So the first thing that we're going to uh, talk about is uh, the differentiability of vector functions. You see that? So the differentiability of vector functions. So uh, already since we have managed to actually uh, introduce the concept of the limit uh, in vector functions or parametric functions, uh, at this point in time, the next thing that we'd like to do now is to see how we can then use the limit definition to actually bring about uh, differentiability and integrability of parametric functions, uh, which is what we are going to see today. So this is an easy section, and therefore I'm not going to uh, do uh, a lot of uh, complicated examples because uh, whatever is happening here, it follows straightforward from fifth tier mathematics um, when it comes to uh, determining whether a typical function is differentiable or not. So what we're going to do is just to lay down some definitions and maybe do one or two examples and then that's it. You see. Okay, so differentiability. So uh, if, uh, if uh, f of t, which is defined as fx, t, fy, t, fz, t, is a vector function, then we define the derivative of this vector function as what? So uh, the derivative of the vector function, which is actually denoted as f uh, prime of t, it is actually the limit as t approaches uh, some number. Sorry, sorry, it's not t. So it is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of t plus h minus f of t over h, which is actually the same definition that we met in our univariable calculus. So it is the same definition that holds true also uh, for uh, vector functions, that uh, if uh, you want to find the derivative, then uh, this is how you go about it. You see that? So this is the definition of the derivative of a vector function. You see? So if this limit exists, then we say that f prime of t is differentiable. You see that because one thing that you must uh, uh, be familiar with now when it comes to the evolution of limits is that a uh, limit is not something that always exists uh, for given for different types of functions there are some functions for whereby the limit does exist and then there are some cases where the limit doesn't exist you see that so if this particular limit were to exist uh, for this vector function f prime t then we say this function is differentiable otherwise the function is not differentiable. You see that? So uh, those are things that you should know, basically. So now this is quite simple and straightforward. And um, uh, we have been dealing with that since first year courses where we have been trying to, 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 to verify differentiability of all these different types of functions. So for univariable functions, now we're gonna, not going to touch any examples on this uh, as this has been well practiced. You see, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move forward to actually put some 
laws or some rules on how exactly can one differentiate or find the derivative of a function without the use of this limit definition. Because uh, the limit definition, you know that it is always used in instances when the question is about the differentiability of a particular vector function. So if we're not interested in the differentiability of a particular vector function, then we know that there are just some short cuts or some rules that can be used to find the derivative uh, at fast speed. So this is what we're going to state now and then do one simple example to practice it. You see that? So... Um, uh, the derivative uh, with respect to t of f prime t uh, given above is determined using so every time when you want to find the derivative of f yet of t which uh, is the derivative of this with respect to time it is just the derivative with respect to time of fx of t and the derivative with respect to time of fy of t and the derivative with respect to ta t sorry not time of fz of t like that so uh, this is how you find the, 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 the derivative of vector function. You just differentiate all the, comp uh, uh, the components uh, individually with respect to the parameter t, like that. So this is also simple and straightforward. As long as you know the rule given any vector function, you simply just take uh, the derivatives of the components with respect to time, and then that's it. So let's do an example then to, to practice this. So a typical example that uh, one can get will be uh, given that uh, some vector function ft is equal to um, sine t uh, 3e to 2t uh, determine f prime T. So those are typical questions that one can get from giving a vector function in two dimensions because the definition holds in any dimension. So now how would you evaluate this? So to evaluate this now, you know that uh, to find f prime of t, you simply differentiate everything with respect to t. So you differentiate sine, you get cos of t, and you differentiate that, you get 6e to 2t. So that gives simple... Uh, our definition of the derivative so it's something so quite so simple to find so the next thing that we want to look at is integration now how to find uh, the integral of vector functions so how do we obtain the integral of parametric functions you see that so if um, f of t is the vector function fxt uh, fyt fzt then we have that you see that so uh, if you want to find the integral of this vector function with respect to t, parameter t, sorry, it is just the integral of the component. So it is the integral of fx dt, integral of fy dt, integral of fz dt, like that, where t is the parameter uh, for which all these functions depend on, like that. So this is also a straightforward definition uh, which uh, simply tells you that the derivative of vector function is the derivative of the individual components. So that's simply what you are learning here. So uh, it, uh, something that uh, one example is also enough to demonstrate how exactly uh, we can deal with this. So a typical example that we have, it goes as follows. So it says 
uh, evaluate. So we are asked to evaluate the integral sine squared t lin t e to 2t then dt. So let me call this integral i anyway to make life easier for referencing. So solution now, how can we deal with this? So we know according to the definite that we have defined already that uh, uh, whatever they want us to evaluate is just simply the integral of sine squared t dt, integral of lin t dt, and the integral of e to 2t dt, like that. So that's what we have to evaluate. So now what you have to do is to deal with these things component-wise. So now what is the integral of the first term? So we want the integral of sine squared t dt. So how can we deal with this? So to deal with the even powers, we know that we can use the half angle identity. So this becomes half times the integral of 1 minus cos 2t dt. This will give us half. Then we'll get t minus half sine 2t, like that. So we get this integral from that. You see, so what I, I've just used there is what is called the half angle identity. You see, and you know that uh, when you integrate cos, you don't get negative sine, but you get sine. So this is what we get from here. And... Uh, for the next term, we want to find the integral of lin t dt. So uh, this we know uh, already uh, that, uh, what can I say? So uh, to, to deal with this uh, integral, I'll just let it be some i y for now. And then uh, I'll show you a nice trick on how to deal with this integral. Uh, uh, most of the time. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, consider this thing. So let's consider uh, the derivative with respect to time of t lin t. You see, so what is the derivative uh, with respect to time of t lin t? We know that this derivative uh, using the product rule is going to be lin t uh, then plus 1. You see, because uh, we we see uh, that uh, when you differentiate lin t, you get one over t that will cancel that. Then if I cross multiply, I will get d of t lin t is equals to lin t plus one, then dt. So I can now put in the integral both sides. So I get the integral of d t lin t is equals to the integral of lin t dt plus the integral of uh, what we call this of dt you see so therefore we can see now that the integral of lin t dt from here uh, it is simple the t lin t minus t so that's what we get from that then from the last integral is quite obvious. Uh, finally, we know that the integral of e to 2t dt is what? It is half e to 2t. So therefore, we can now conclude that uh, the derivative, which is f prime of t, it is simple the following so we saw that the first term we had half t minus that and we saw that the next term was just t lin t minus t and half e to 2t so this uh, is how we find the integral so this is how you integrate all these vector functions so if 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 it's if it, again uh, sorry 
there is something that we forgot anyway because this is not a, a definite integral so since this thing is not uh, a definite integral uh, the final solution actually has to be like this you see that so therefore uh, the final solution should be f prime t is actually equal to half 1 minus half sine 2t plus maybe let's call ax then t lin t minus t plus ay then again half e to 2t plus az so whereby now in each and every uh, term we add uh, a, an individual uh, integrating constant we don't have to use the same constant throughout all the components because the in, these components they are being integrated independently of each other so we have to put a constant that is different for each of these components so you can also use ax ay az or you can use c1 c2 c3 it's up to you which suitable constants do you choose to use but uh, that's how it works Otherwise, yeah, this session is going to end here. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.